Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, to review the 120 North Main Street Sunland Senior Housing 100% construction drawings and specifications, otherwise known as the final site plans, as submitted to the Sunland Zoning Board of Appeals on or about September 15, 2020, and to determine whether such submission is complete and satisfies the requirements of all appropriate conditions. And I had arbitrarily said conditions one through 11 listed in the zoning board's decision on the application for a comprehensive permit. Uh, and I, I like to interpret that kind of broadly. Uh, you know, we're here to, to take a look at the drawings. Uh, uh, you know, they're you know, gonna get a presentation uh, by uh, RDI's team, uh, you know, sort of highlighting uh, the drawings and where they've come since we last saw them in their preliminary form at the time of the comprehensive permit. Uh, we also have our, uh, our engineer, uh, Sandra, Sandy Brock uh, from Niche Engineering. Uh, so uh, we, she has, uh, she has filed a letter or two and has comments regarding this, and uh, we we want to uh, you know determine the uh, uh, you know the status and uh, whether this these uh, uh, drawings are are in conformance with the uh, uh, with a comprehensive permit. So I think. And that being said, you know, uh, I think I'd like to turn it over to, uh, you know, unless there's any question from my board members or, or uh, you know, Tom uh, Quinn, uh, Quinlan, uh, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Laura's team to, uh, you know, just you know, sort of give us an overview and uh, uh, to uh, of the of the uh, of the construction drawings. Um, thank you, Steve. It's nice to see everybody again. I'm sure you've missed us greatly since we last got together. <laughs> um, so what we sent to the board was the full plan set, which is ginormous and it went digitally. Um, and then we sent paper copies of just kind of the primary plans. We sent all of the site plans and some of the most kind of fundamental building plans um, were sent around along with a narrative prepared by Tom Chalmers, the architect, about what we identified as kind of significant changes. Um, anytime you move from preliminary to final plans, there are a lot of developments that happen. In this case, most of those developments were really fleshing out the original schematic concept. They weren't necessarily changing it. Um, but where there were changes, um, that's what we wanted to review with you tonight so that you are familiar and comfortable with the final plan set. Um, I'm going to introduce the folks that we have here with us tonight. Um, some of them will be presenting. Uh, we have Gina Gavoni, who's the executive director of RDI. Um, we have a new face, which is Jeffrey Dome, who was recently hired to serve as the, the OPM or the clerk of the works for the construction phase of the project. Uh, we have Tom Chalmers, who's the lead project architect with headphones on. And we have two folks from Berkshire Design Group. We have Jeff Squire, who is the landscape architect and Mark Darnold, who worked on the civil engineering. So we have people here who can answer any level of question that you may have as we go through. Um, our thought was to have Tom um, start us off and do what is called sharing screen. So with any luck, everybody will see the plans on the screen They'll be small, but you can also refer to the printed plans that hopefully you have somewhere nearby um, and kind of just hit the highlights, Tom. And I think that if people have questions as Tom goes through, we might as well take them as they come so we don't have to kind of flip back and forth in the plan set. Um, and then I know Steve wants to walk through the uh, review letter prepared by Sandy Brock and responses prepared by Berkshire Design Group. Um, but we figured we'd just start off with an overview of the, the final plans. So I'll turn it over to Tom if there aren't any 
questions. And um, hi, everybody. Um, can everybody hear me? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And can you see the screen, the yeah. drawing on the screen? Good. <laughs> Two accomplishments tonight. Um, so you have this. There should be also a uh, two-page summary sheet of um, changes, um, which you have. I can also bring that on the screen if we need it. I think what I'll do is I'll just scroll through until I get to sheet L2, which has, which is where the changes start. And generally speaking, um, sheets that have been changed have a, sorry, back one. Okay. So this is the site drawing on the original set. This included a uh, planting plan. It now there's now a separate planting plan. Um, and shall I just walk through each item? Um, um, sure. Or I, I mean, if the folks from Berkshire Design Group want to highlight the um, site plan changes, that's fine. Or if you want to do it, Tom, that's OK, too. Well, I can quickly highlight them and then okay. they can talk about what the, the so one of the first one on our list was that um, the, the parking area right here was just changed a little bit in terms of how the sidewalk was paved and that this sidewalk is that is that grade um, with a flush curb and the ramps up to higher elevation or here. It made it easier for people to get off the sidewalk. Um, the other piece is that we've uh, added a storage shed in the rear of the house, uh, which has access to the walks. Um, the, there were a couple of locations on the H uh, for condensers. And I, um, I think there was one here and maybe one here, but they're not, these are the final locations is one in the front and two in the rear. Um, as I mentioned, the planting shown on L4. And then there is an, <clears throat> there is an alternate um, listed that, uh, Two alternates. One was to change the curbing um, adjacent to the sidewalks from asphalt to precast concrete, and the other was to change the sidewalks from asphalt to concrete. And I think both of those <clears throat> are going to be accepted. Um, so that's a change in the in the site. So these interior internal sidewalks, which were originally asphalt, will now be concrete, and the curbing will be concrete as well. Um, <clears throat> this is LT5 is just a, it's basically a detailed drawing of that sheet LT5. Um, uh, L3 grading and drainage, we had uh, probably the biggest change here is going from a uh, um, sewage ejector system to a, a gravity sewage system. Um, which is shown in this area here. And then there was, there's also was a change in pipe size from the house. Uh, water service was changed a little bit to bring it up the, up the bank. Um, and there's a sump pit in the house. Um, I don't know if there's any questions about the sewage line. If not, I will keep going. Um, this is a detail sheet of the of the previous sheet. Um, so there have been a number of this is L four the planting plan. Uh, there have been a number of planting changes. I didn't go into detail into what they were, but I think it mostly the number of trees in here changed, um, and some of the planting around equipment may have changed also. Um, and then uh, we had a number of detail sheets, L5 Mark, to L10. I got a, Mark, I got a question for you. Uh, if possible, I mean, uh, you know, the, the board knows that after we issued the comprehensive permit, it was appealed. And you had some negotiations with uh, the uh, uh, and a butter 
and uh, the, uh, the result, that some changes were made. I, well, you know, when you come across it, uh, and I know plantings, I think, was one of the things. Uh, when, uh, you know, anything that sort of, you know, that comes to mind as you're going through the, 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 the drawing review, if you could say this is a, uh, as a result of uh, the negotiations or the, uh, the agreement and amendment that was made uh, to the, to the, uh, uh, to the plans. Uh, again, this is Mark, but um, I think what primarily we did, we explained in greater detail exactly what the greatest system was to DEP, and they accepted those uh, defense of our drainage system, essentially. Um, yeah. So I'm hearing a little bit of background noise. This yeah. is Laura. So there were a couple of appeals for this project. One, um, I think Mark is referencing an appeal of the orders of conditions. We also had an appeal of the zoning decision itself. Um, and uh, we did return to the board with updated plans that were reviewed by the, by the board. Um, some of those changes were, uh, you know, making a more pronounced crosswalk uh, where the driveway crosses the sidewalk, adding a stop sign at that location adding speed bumps that you now see along the driveway. Um, and Jeff, if you can help me remember, because I know we had a lot of conversation about the plantings um, mm -hmm. along the boundary, the rear boundary right. of the abutters property. Can you talk a little bit how those might've changed in response to that settlement? Sure, so th there were a couple of comments that were made and a couple of changes that um, were made in, in response to those. Um, that discussion part of it was um, just ensuring that there was planting, you know, along that along that edge, and that that would, um, you know, adequately screen, you know, the views that were objectionable. And I, I one of the other changes that had gotten incorporated, I know, was um, there was a transition of the fence section as it approaches um, the main road. It drops from a, you know, I think a uh, an eight foot tall fence down to a down to a four foot. So that transition and how those plants are incorporated into that. Um, were, were part of the revisions that that had been made, yeah. But I don't think I don't think any of those changes. I think all of those were made prior to this final this yeah. final set. Yep. Okay. Uh, moving on. Uh, so we have um, L five through ten detail sheets, mm -hmm. and I think this is just um, there's more details. Basically, I don't think there's really uh, anything significant change. I guess the only thing is the all the details related to the sewer uh, ejection system were removed. And there were additional paving and additional uh, curb details. Uh, some of these, some of these details are new, but many of them were some of the signage details are more advanced. The rest of it was previously there. Um, and I think that's it for the site. So the um, in the apartment building, um, very little of substance changed in in the plans. Um, the only uh, I think the really only thing on the plans, um, other than sort of you know detailing, determining finishes, and things like that, was that in this uh, in the lobby area. Uh, we added a, a little storage room um, for chairs and things like that. Um, the kitchen, which is a uh, basically a, a warming type kitchen, there's no um, flame, open flame or anything. But this was filled out with equipment, refrigerators, uh, electric heating equipment. Um, the other piece was this. This stair, this central stair was opened up from the first up to the second floor. I mean, at, it's opened at the base, it's closed at the second floor. Um, it's not one of the main egress stairs and it was done to kind of open, to encourage people to use stairs rather than the elevator and open this stairway up into, into, the, um, into the common space. Um, The upper floors, uh, really no changes. 
same same con unit configuration, same number of units. Um, there was, I think, uh, oh, there was a couple that we had at, at least one storage area here that was taken over by mechanical equipment. Um, I think that's basically the only change on the third floor. Uh, probably one of the bigger changes was just re, uh, making the solar collector system real. So this is a this is an exact number of, of collectors that are going to be on the building. Um, I would also add, Tom, that the original uh, permitting plan showed solar collectors also on the farmhouse extension. Oh yeah, right. And, all and those. Those yeah, have been I'll, eliminated. Um, it just wasn't cost effective to tie the two systems together. We weren't getting enough juice off the new building. Um, so what they did was they really maximized the build, the roof availability on the, the new construction building. Yeah, when we so when old, we get to oh, yeah, when sorry. we get to the apartment house, I can show you the change in elevations. It, and it it does um, it makes the building look a little more traditional. Um, so when we went to, we, we, our extra elevation drawings were uh, extracted from a SketchUp model. And now basically they, these are, are our CAD drawings. So they're, it's the same, basically exactly the same, except it's just much more precision uh, drawings that are used to build the building, not so much a rendering. Um, the rear deck may have been a little bit more developed. It's got an open railing. I'm not sure that was shown last time. Um, but other than that, same siding, same windows, same roofing. Um, so moving on to the house. Um, so you'll see compared to the other, uh, there's no solar collectors here uh, to the, the previous version. Um, that's the main difference. This that we did not revise these drawings, so this does not show the shed. The the elevation drawings inside do. Um, I don't think there's really anything different in the basement. Um, on the first floor, I think that we might have still had some steps at this end of the porch. We do not. And just to remind folks that the porch is getting is getting rebuilt to include a sloped walk down to get to the path that leads around to the parking. So it has the front steps, it just doesn't have the side steps. And this this sloped walk is less than 5%. So it's not a ramp, actually, it's, a, it's just a sloping covered walkway. Um, let's see, another change is upstairs. Uh, I think maybe the only change here is that Earlier plans might have shown a lot of these walls removed. We're basically leaving all the framing. So that's the second story of the existing farmhouse that second, will just right. be used and, for and storage. The, and this is the attic space. Yeah, there's no unit up here. And then on the roof plan, the only difference is that there are no collectors on the rear. Uh, so again, these are uh, exterior elevations. Um, this is the front of the house. This is the rear. This is the in elevation. This is the shed that we're proposing. Um, it's about uh, three feet off the rear of the house. And then this is what it looks like from the end. So this is the south side. Formerly there were uh, there were solar collectors here. Can I mention something about the south side, Tom? Yep. which is that we've, we will likely um, take up advice from the Historic Commission that, that we replicate a, a window that we think might have been there but was since removed by showing closed shutters. Can you show that with your cursor? Um, yeah, so it, it, it's somewhere in here. We're not sure exactly where, but when we will uncover it with the, when the siding, old siding comes off and the drywall comes off, we will uncover it inside. So it was right around in this location. And what we'll do is we'll, uh, we're not gonna put a window in there, but we are going to uh, trim the exterior as if it was a window. And we'll probably have a flat hardy panel instead of the clapboards and then put closed shutters over that. So it will look like a, basically like a window with shutters. Um, and here is the other side facing north. 
and that's the shed that was not on there before. If I may ask, why not um, put a window there instead of? Uh... Um, well, because the the stair it interferes with the stair, so we may be we might be able to get a high window here, you know, a half size kind of square. Um, but what was there before was a full window we have in a photograph, and I'm actually thinking that you know there was a much larger house here originally. Um, and I think these stairs may not have been at that location. I think the stairs might have been with the large house. Um, and then that when that was taken down, they built the stairs here and filled in that window. Because looking at from the photographs, it appears that the window is right about where my cursor is. And it goes low to the floor. So I don't see how there could be. You couldn't have that window in the stair, but we'll see when we, we open it up. Right. We'll look. We'll look when we demo the interior of the house. We'll look for vestiges of where that window might have been. We'll also look at the windows that um, face the street. These guys kind of here on, on the porch to see what their original dimensions were. You know, we're just trying to bring it back, do a little bit of restoration as we go along to make it look as historically accurate as as it can look. Thank you. Um, and I think that's it for a review of these plans. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Tom and team. Uh, I, I guess maybe at this point I can act important and chairman-like and say, uh, do, uh, do any of my board members have any questions or uh, comments relative to that presentation and the drawings that are in front of you? Steve? Yes. Um, I'm just curious about the no longer needing the slinger for the sewage system. If we could just hear a little bit more, what changed or did yeah. the slope yeah. change? Or? Yeah. So I certainly, I'll, I, I'll let Mark talk about that. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, in the early stages, the preliminary process, the uh, building was actually in a lower location in early stages. And at that point in time, we needed the sewer injector system. And as the project developed, the uh, whole site in the south and the uh, east end raised up in elevation and reevaluating it during the uh, actual construction document process, we determined that the uh, elevation was high enough to give us a gravity system, and which is much more preferable than a ejector system. So uh, we re, you know, gave it a good, good look at it, and we have plenty of slope and adequate uh, capacity to use gravity, which is our preference. It didn't really change any alignment or anything else. We just kept the same sewer alignment. We just changed it from a force main to a gravity system. So let me follow up with one other question. I, I, I don't remember the details, but I think there was something about the sizes of the lines that was discussed at one of the last meetings. Does that change any of, of those questions? No, I think uh, primarily the, the force main was obviously much smaller, but when we came out with the uh, proposed system when we actually tied in the, uh, the front farmhouse area, we up, we uh, modified this, the sizes to accommodate the gravity associated with the, uh, the main building. So they're all coordinated to be the correct size to accommodate the sewage. Did any of the water line um, sizing change? During no, I, think we, I think we always had an eight inch. You have to have by code, you have to have an eight inch main yeah. which would service the fire hydrants all the way down to the rear. So we have to have an eight inch coming into the full site and then we branch off from the uh, main into the fire, dom fire and domestic into the building. So we have an eight inch coming in through the site, which has always been our original design. Um, I don't know, just thinking back, whether this was on the permit plan set or not, but we are intending to put one EV car charging um, station on this site. Um, I think it's on the layout plan, uh, Tom, that you can see where it's going to go. And uh, I just think, yes, I think it's, it's new. Here. So, <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay, right there. So it's pretty innocuous, but it's, it, we, it's an experiment. We don't know how many people will actually have electric cars, but 
everybody says that's the way the world is going to go. So it's good to get the infrastructure in at the time of construction. Um, it'll be one kind of stand with capacity to plug two cars into it. Um, we're figuring we get the infrastructure and we could always put in more, but we're really not sure if it's going to have takers or not. So it's a little toe in the water to see if it will get used or not. If not, people will just park regular cars there. Well, I, I would think along with the solar panels, that's uh, certainly, uh, you know, adding to your uh, positive yep. environmental footprint. That's, that's the idea of it, for sure. That, that is exciting, but doesn't it cost you two parking spaces? Well, I think we'll, I don't think it costs us to because there would still be residents who live there. So it's residents who would have had gas powered cars now might have electric cars. So I don't see it as a reduction in the parking. Um, I don't think we'll, people will come from off site. It, it'll just be for residents. People shouldn't be coming from other areas to charge their cars there. because so it's going to be deep into our, into our lot. Why, Stuart? Do you have an electric car? Are you going to come and charge your car here? <laughs> I, I have a big gas guzzling minivan, so no. I <laughs> believe so, it or not, you believe it or not, you're going to see that with residential as a requirement soon in a in a garage. Uh, so. <laughs> yay for us, we're ahead of the curve. You know, it, we will know who has what kind of car um, living there. And so if we know that no one has an electric vehicle, it'll, it, we won't, you know, it won't be restricted. Um, if we know that people do, then we'll probably post it, you know, electric car parking only. And it's truly an experiment to see if people will use it. Yeah, any other questions from board members? Okay, well, I think uh, we can move on maybe to uh, hear a report uh, from okay. our board engineer, Sandra. Should, should I stop the share? Would you like me to stop the share or do you want to keep the drawings up? I don't know if, if Sandra would have need of them, but or she's got something else to share or? I would say at this point, why don't you don't share uh, just so that we have a little bit better view yep. of everyone. Um, and then if we uh, need a, a sheet or something, we can we can do that. Yep. Um, knowing this is a public hearing, I'll just introduce myself. Um, Sandy Brock with Niche Engineering, civil engineer. And so we were um, uh, hired by the ZBA to do a review of this particular 40B, uh, did our original letter back in January of 2019, and then uh, was asked to uh, do a conformance review uh, with the uh, conditions of the approval um, and, and prepared a letter on that and sent that out in uh, mid-October. Uh, generally, what I was looking at there was to see the uh, advancement of the drawings from uh, 40B submission, which is, you know, is somewhat preliminary in nature, although the drawing set we got was was a little bit more advanced than typically you get for 40B. Um, then took a look at that and compared it to the approval and the conditions that, uh, including some of the conditions I had recommended from my January uh, 2019 letter, and went through the information sent. And at that time, uh, for the October mid-October letter, I had gotten uh, a set of plans and 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 some other backup information. Uh, I went through the conditions. In general, a lot of uh, the design uh, comments and, or conditions that we had had been addressed. Uh, there was some other supplemental information that was part of the conditions that were not addressed. Um, and then the applicant uh, submitted additional information. Um, and some of that has been received and some of it is not completed due to uh, the fact that the, the project is, is not been awarded for construction yet. Uh, I'm gonna just ask 
uh, the, the board if you want me to go through each one of kind of my comments or do you want me to just hit, hit the highlights? Um, I'm, we'll do either one depending upon how, what you would like me to kind of uh, talk about. Everyone's had the, the letter, so please let me know which you want me to talk about. Well, uh, I, speaking just as, as a, an individual on the board, uh, I think it would it wouldn't be a bad exercise to go through all your comments, but I, I would also like to defer to my board and how, how they, uh, what are your thoughts on this? Um, uh, no, not hearing any, maybe. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm happy to go through each one. It will not take too long. But... No, it won't take too long. And I think it would be a refresher because uh, I, I did something prior to this meeting uh, and I hadn't done it in, in a while is that I actually read the entire comprehensive permit and I got a couple of surprises. Uh, things I had assumed were not quite, you know, I'll, we'll get, I'll get to those later, but uh, there, there were a couple of things like, oh, I forgot about that one. So uh, I think going through the, you know, all your points uh, you know, would, would be a, a useful exercise for the board. Happy to do that. And so um, I, you know, basically the way I format the letter is, is just to uh, begin with what my scope was. And, and my scope was uh, looking at the site and site related um, and civil engineering um, uh, information shown on, on the site plans itself. Um, and then I list out all of the plans and information I got. I'm not going to go through all of those plans because uh, it also included all the architectural plans, which I can say I did not look at. Um, and then getting into the actual kind of review and looking at each of the conditions. Um, and generally, I'm going to go through the conditions that I looked at that I saw were site related. And starting uh, with number five was it was talking about landscape plantings. Um, there was just a condition requiring you know, a complete list of the plantings and so forth, and they are included um, on the plan set. Uh, I did not go through the individual plant, uh, plants listed and make an assessment or gave an opinion on those plans listed. I generally looked for the type of plant, uh, type of plantings and locations to make sure they were meeting uh, the condition. Uh, number six was a construction mitigation plan. And basically, we did not receive that in the supplemental information uh, from the applicant. I'm just going to open up. And their response was that the, uh, the project is out to bid. Uh, but since they, not, they have not awarded it uh, to a contractor yet, that that mitigation plan is forthcoming. And if the applicant has any supplemental information to that statement, feel free to chime in. Sure. Um, the project has been awarded to a general contractor who is still, I think, selecting their site contractor. And that's the person or persons that we would need to coordinate with, I think, to really develop um, this construction mitigation plan. It's primarily their vehicles um, that will be coming and going most frequently and on the site. So I guess I was suggesting in an, an email earlier with, with Steve is, if something is pending like this that's fairly detailed, um, it, can the board designate a person such as Ms. Brock or the building inspector to be the recipient on behalf of the board of this construction mitigation plan um, and give review and approval for it? Just a, a thought, because I think we've hit most of these, but it, some things we just haven't gotten to yet. If I could, uh, Laura. Uh... Yeah. I, you know, I, 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 I saw your email uh, and uh, there, are, there are a few things I want to discuss like and, and talk about a, a couple of surprises. Uh, we, we can defer that okay. maybe to the end of uh, uh, Sandra's, okay. uh, you know, letter. Uh, and I, sure. I think there's another one like this that, yep. that, that falls into this uh, category. So yep. uh, uh, we'll, we'll bring that up and uh, 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 deal with that later. And um, in continuing with that particular condition, uh, the construction documents did have an erosion control plan. 
Uh, it was really just the construction mitigation and sequencing plan. Uh, and that includes, you know, your truck, tr truck trips and routes and things like that uh, to be reviewed by the town. Um, uh, number seven, uh, there's just a, a series of uh, recommendations I had previously made um, just um, for the ZBA to receive um, all the permits needed for this particular um, project outside of the permit that you issued. Um, I did not receive uh, copies of those permits. I don't specifically need to see those permits. Um, I just want to make sure that the ZBA has a copy of those uh, permits on hand in case a question comes up. And that would be obviously like the order of conditions. If that was appealed, then it would be the superseding order of condition to make sure all the permits are, you know, in the file of the ZBA. Um, that might also include sewer connection permit. Uh, previously, you were going to be doing a, a, a ejector pump, uh, but now you're just going to do a gravity line, but they'll also have to get a uh, uh, sewer connection permit, and to be quite honest, they would not be going for that quite yet, so they wouldn't even have that in hand. That's something the contractor will pull. So there's a whole series of water sewer uh, connections that you'll get, but those are the type of things um, that you want to make sure you have copies of uh, and check in to make sure that the applicant has gone after those. Uh, we did ask about uh, with a fill material. Um, I think we all realize that there's a lot of fill coming onto the site. And so when you have that large amount of fill, you just want to make sure it's clean and free of any um, any materials that would uh, cause an issue. Um, and again, this was responded to by the applicant that um, because they just you know, hadn't awarded it, but have awarded it and it's just starting, that they don't have a source yet um, for that fill material, again, this is just something that should be checked um, you know, by the town to make sure that it's clean fill coming in and it's obtained from you know, an appropriate source. Um, I had a, there was a question about some of the uh, a roof drain constructability and that had to do with the location of it and it was a preliminary drawing. Uh, the uh, Construction drawings have has more detail, has more uh, elevation information to demonstrate that it can be constructed. And so I looked at that as being uh, addressed. Curbing information, um, asphalt curbing is generally proposed. Um, and there were some areas of integral uh, concrete curbing. Um, and I believe uh, the applicant um, was discussing this earlier about the, the alternatives and what is going to be placed in for curbing. I don't know if you want to just update what will be put in just to make sure that everyone's clear on uh, what the uh, curbing material is. Sure, I, I can. I can go yeah. ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I was going to say, I, it, was, it was mostly, um, it was concrete curb in addition to asphalt curb. Um, I think there was uh, a detail or a couple of sections that we had proposed uh, precast curb um, while you know other other concrete curbing on site was was uh, integral curb and it just made sense to combine those two and avoid you know too many different curb types so any of the concrete curb that's on site is now an integral concrete curb so that and the sidewalk will be all poured as, as one you know monolithic uh, piece so that was really just eliminating the precast detail. Okay, uh, and, and I and I actually, uh, you know, just my opinion that an integral curb is actually will actually last longer. It's typically, if you have a good contractor, uh, can uh, can be a little bit more durable than some of the precasts that you can buy and set and so forth. So um, that's no issue on my part. Um, uh, I did have a couple questions about handicap ramps and accessibility. Um, and, and in general, uh, all the details had been updated on the plans and, and there's an accessible route from the handicap spaces to each building. Uh, because of this is, um, has to do with ADA and the type of uh, regulations and laws that are governing ADA, I would just uh, defer to the building inspector to confirm that um, the accessible routes are acceptable. Um, you know, they have them on there and I reviewed it. It's just the final say on uh, locations of handicapped sp uh, spaces and accessible routes should be with the, with the building inspector. So they'll review that upon getting a building permit. 
uh, the screen along. Uh, we had talked a little bit uh, earlier about uh, the plantings and the screening along the property lines. Um, and uh, in general, uh, you know, the, this this information has been added. Um, and, and it's again just wanting to make sure that there's no issues with the screening um, uh, with the uh, neighbors to the north. Again, it's it, it's something that will probably once everything is done because it's an elevation change, there's a fence and there's plantings, and so that just needs to be confirmed. Um, the condition has been met. Um, I think the the final judgment will be once they put it in um, to see if if everything is sufficient for uh, screening. Um, the, the next one has to do with some information on details for one particular stormwater uh, detail. That's uh, letter G and uh, the plans have been updated to address that. As we talked earlier about the um, pump station, uh, that has been uh, uh, removed and a gravity line has been, uh, uh, has been proposed instead. Obviously, uh, I would agree with the design engineer is what I'd rather see a gravity line um, and not a pump station. Um, it's very different maintenance, obviously. And based on the slope shown on the plans, that should not be an issue. Uh, uh, there was a comment about showing electrical and telecom services on the plans. An electrical site plan uh, was added to the CDs um, and uh, the telecom had not been. I would just uh, let the um, applicant kind of respond to that. And, and again, the reason why I originally uh, had suggested showing it is because the, of the number of conduits crossing other utilities and just to make sure everything was coordinated. So I'll defer to the applicant on the telecom lines if, if that has been added to any of the plans or any other kind of response on that. It, it has been not added to the plans. And I, I think our response was that, you know, generally we would follow the same, um, same run, same, um, uh, uh, same trench as the electrical service uh, typically is what's done. Um, and we don't foresee any issues with, you know, other, uh, uh, other utility conflicts, the electrical and the, um, you know, telecom uh, conduit would run roughly at the same elevations into the building, same, you know, same electrical room. Um, so didn't anticipate any issues. Um, and so, um, but yeah, those, the, that specific line has not been added to the plan yet. And, and uh, from my experience, uh, it is typical that the telecom will come in right next to electrical. It's just, it wasn't specifically uh, shown on the plans. Um, I think one of the key things is the updated geotech uh, report. Uh, and there's some very specific things um, in that geotech report uh, that, you know, uh, the board should be aware of. And that is obviously we've talked previously about the amount of fill coming in. Uh, there's a couple of um, uh, paragraphs in that geotech report that specifically address uh, the amount of fill coming in, and there's a series of uh, recommendations. And I think as previously, what um, what is key is to make sure that those recommendations are followed. Uh, some of those recommendations, including uh, preloading for a month or two of the fill and monitoring the settlement of the fill. Uh, the uh, geotech report goes into some details about it about uh, anticipated amount of settling with that. But I think the monitoring is um, an important, important component of that. Um, but that is all spelled out in the geotech. So we did get the updated information. It's there. They just need to uh, follow that, uh, the guidance of the geotech. Um, there's also, there was uh, some uh, comments. Uh, regarding some of the uh, general drainage system and stormwater system um, and some of the details uh, that was shown. Um, basically, all of the details uh, were updated that I had uh, commented on and they were uh, addressed in the construction documents. Um, and then um, as far as fire access, um, there was some discussion during the previous public hearings about that and about some of the turning uh, movements and so forth. 
um, I would defer to the fire department to make sure that they're satisfied with um, uh, with the turning movements. And and I do not believe I got a turning movements uh, for the fire truck uh, in the package that was sent to me. Please let me know if I'm incorrect in that. But I looked through that additional information. I didn't see any turning movements. But I would uh, defer to the fire chief for that. So that's the uh, that's comments from uh, my October letter. And again, I think some of the key points from a site perspective um, is the fact that the uh, pump system for the sanitary sewer was was um, eliminated, which is a good thing. I think the detail in the geotech is something that should be followed. And then um, as far as the screening goes, it was updated. The information is on the plans. And once it's in, um, installed, then it'll have a better idea if the screening is, is sufficient. So that kind of concludes. Happy to answer any of those questions, any questions that you may have. Uh, th thank you, Sandra. Uh, uh, before I throw it to questions from my board, uh, does uh, does RD does the RDI team have any uh, any further elaboration or any uh, further comments other than what was made during uh, Sandra's presentation? Um, on the fire department issue, um, we did have a number of submissions sketches that went to the fire department at the very tail end of the permit process, um, showing ladders getting to the second story and various turning movements. So it seemed like we had reached a place with the fire chief where he was satisfied with the drawings. Yeah. Um, and that's my understanding of where we where we left off with him. I, I, I think that might be kind of a, a loose end we need to uh, follow up on and, uh, you know, follow up with uh, Chief Benjamin to, uh, to make sure that's kosher. And that's kind of, you know, that's like, uh, condition number 11 of the comprehensive permits or sort of, you know, yeah, I, a little I think outside beyond, but. Yeah, I think he sent a letter to the ZBA. So I'll go back and check for that. I might have to look for that. Uh, uh, board members, do you have any, you know, questions or comments on the, uh, the report as uh, presented by our board's engineer? Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, before I go into one of my surprises that I found in my review of uh, the comprehensive permit, uh, you know, I'd like to ask, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna put Tom Quinlan a little bit on the spot and I will say uh, up front, uh, I don't know how much time he had to, to review uh, or you know to review the drawings. I, I sent him a bunch of stuff last minute and he probably choked on it. <laughs> on all the stuff that I sent him. But Tom, I, I would just like to ask you uh, your overall comments and thoughts uh, uh, in regards to, uh, you know, the, uh, the construction drawings that were uh, uh, presented here and sent your way. I mean, what I, I didn't have a lot of time to look at it, but yes, I did review um, some of the things that we started talking about is the uh, fire chief. I really make, like to make sure he had, you know, some type of drawings of your turning in that, as well as a pre-construction meeting where we have the fire chief, the police chief, where the routes are going to be with that much fill being hauled in and all, and, you know, invite everybody we can with any other concern as far as the water, um, sewer, anybody that might have a, you know, a concern about it. Um, so that would be one thing as we were discussing the, um, you know, pre-meeting with all that prior given to them. And I did have one question on the solar. Is that going to be battery? Are you going to have plans for battery backup on that? We, solar, you know, I should say. I, I don't think we have space to store the batteries, quite honestly. Um, we do have a backup generator on this site that's diesel powered. And so we have not looked deeply into what we could get with batteries, but we think we can get a lot more life safety coverage with the diesel generator and than we ever could with the solar batteries. The technology is still kind of, you know, you can run a few lights, but it's not going to do a lot for life safety. So um, we, we have a generator. 
Right. Well, it it actually has come a long way, but it's the protection yeah. for it. That was going to be what I was concerned in this project. You know how you protect that. <laughs> Yeah. So. No, it's it's coming, but it hasn't come that far. And honestly, we weren't sure if the solar panels themselves would be affordable um, with our budget. Um, but happily, we got some really good pricing and we're able to incorporate them in the project. But we hadn't thought to rely on them for any kind of backup power. Okay. Yeah, we we were concerned also about how we, where we would put them and how we would protect them and rate the space. So. Okay. Well, thank you. That's that's basically was my concerns at this point, and, and um, the uh, so it has been awarded or in the process of being awarded to somebody. So the general contract has been awarded to Maroy Construction. Um, we did a bid process over the fall. We had uh, five general contractors who came in and bid on the project. We had great really really good contractors, good pricing. Um, we were surprised because we. We know it's kind of crazy times, um, but it came in well. We, they have a strong reputation, um, but they're still um, buying out their subs. And so they, we're, they're not totally sure who the site contractor will be yet. Okay. All right. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Well, thank you, Tom. Um, okay. Uh, Okay, one of the surprises I had was that, uh, as, as you know, even with the, the, the way I uh, uh, worded the agenda was that the zoning board would be the approving authority as, as terms of uh, if the drawings, uh, if the final site plans as submitted uh, were consistent with the comprehensive permit. Uh, and uh, the reason I did that was because uh, I, I got a little confused or a little cross pollination between the uh, Sugarbush Meadows comprehensive permit, where uh, the board was uh, the approving authority as uh, whether uh, the drawings were com complete. And the, the board will remember many go arounds with uh, with the Sugarbush Meadows engineers, uh, uh, you know, going back and forth, uh, you know, approving certain drawings, uh, uh, rejecting certain drawings, uh, asking for more information or asking for further drawings. So, uh, uh, I'll, I'll read a, a section that kind of made me like uh, have a moment. That I choked up a little bit uh, on. Uh, condition number three of the uh, 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 comprehensive permit uh, uh, for, for, for uh, 120 North Main Street says in part, says no construction may commence and no building permits shall issue under this comprehensive permit until the board's engineers engineer has approved the final site plans as being in conformance with this decision said approval to be in writing uh you know that I, I i saw that and i said oh i probably should have looked at that before i instructed sandra uh when she did her peer review because she sort of stated in her letter let's see if i can find it here what was the you know in terms of the scope of the uh The, the you know the, the scope of this peer review uh, was the proposed. I'm trying to see where. Okay, it, it, says, it says niche engineering comments are intended to assist the zoning board of appeals in determining if the su su submitted plans comply with the 40B permit and permit conditions. Uh, and you know that is per pretty much per the instructions that we gave Sandy. Uh, and when I found, uh, you know, that I was thinking that we would be the, the zoning board would be the approving authority in this situation. Uh, the, I guess when, when Jay wrote this, when Jay Tolleman wrote these, uh, uh, wrote up the comprehensive permit, uh, 
he put that approval uh, on the uh, board's engineer. So, uh, Sandy, I, I, you know, is, is how, how, how do we, uh, uh, you know, as far as how do we deal with this contradiction, uh, Sandy, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit. Uh, you know, that, that's a little bit a higher standard uh, than what I asked of you in terms of giving us advice. Uh, but, you know, I could almost see at the end of your report, once all your uh, issues have been addressed, you could say that, you know, this, you know, the, the plans are or are not in compliance with, uh, you know, the, the, the comprehensive permit. So uh, I'm going to sort of ask you on the side, <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Or do you want to throw it back to the zoning board to, to, to deal with that? So, so uh, typically, you know, that's that's not delegated to us as because I'm not an approving uh, entity. I, I certainly um, it's not uncommon for us to get uh, to get asked to look at things. So to provide us sufficient information so you can make that, um, you know, that determination. I, I think in general, uh, you know, I. I Based on doing enough peer reviews, I can word anything so that um, I'm I protect myself from uh, any potential liability. I mean, that's we all should think about that as a as a public entity, as as the designing, as excuse me, as the uh, you know permitting authority. You know, that's um, you yeah, know that's uh, you know uh, a responsibility by you by delegating it. Um, I'm not sure how much you could fully delegate it. I mean, I don't have a problem, you know, looking at the information maybe a little bit closer because I definitely had a fairly narrow scope. The one thing that does um, that bothers me a little bit is just the simple fact that the set of plans, if you're talking about the plans in general, includes um, a lot of uh, architectural drawings and mechanical and electrical drawings. And as a civil engineer, that's not really in our purview to review those plans. Now, I don't know, typically, if you'd be going into great detail, that is something that the building inspector will do is, is review those plans for compliance with the building code and, and other things and uh, so forth. So that would be, when you say the plans in, in general like that, that would probably be the, my only hesitation. But as far as the site and the conditions related uh, to the site, I mean, I, I could come up with a letter um, indicating that I, you know, that uh, it was my opinion um, that it met the conditions. Now, I'm not sure how comfortable you are if you think that's sufficient or not. Um, so just to clarify, it does say final site plans. It doesn't say final plans. Oh, okay. Paragraph. That, all right, thank you. Because maybe th that's why it a... got kicked to you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, are, are you saying, Laura, we're not quite there yet? But uh, yeah. Uh, uh, well, so far as far as the conditions, um, it's really the fact that you don't have a mitigation plan yet, and right. some of the things that haven't come. So that would be conditions that haven't fully been met. Um, as far as the engineering, um, in, in you know, kind of the details of uh, the civil engineering, the utilities, uh, the, the sections for the pavements, those type of things, those have all been reviewed. And, and in, you know, typically, um, you know, the, we would not have a problem, you know, stating that that's been done in conformance with the approval. Um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's not something that we're usually delegated to as, as the authority to approve the plans. Could definitely give you a, a letter uh, as it relates to the site itself. Um, I would just probably include some, um, you know, some assumptions I made and some things um, to basically um, to make sure that the risk exposure to me, to myself, and the company is is appropriate because it's again not something we typically do. 
I don't know if that answers your question, but it's kind of my gut reaction. Well, in, in a way, I, I'm wishing that I had, had invited Jay to, to this meeting because, uh, I mean, he wrote the, uh, uh, you know, he wrote and the board approved the comprehensive permit condition. Uh, and, and again, it, you know, it's not unusual for us to go through and give our opinion that, you know, that it is in conformance to the condition, which is partly what the letter I gave is I had reviewed the original plans. I'd reviewed the original stormwater calculations, everything else. I had made my comments. Uh, majority of them, especially on the design side, have been addressed. Um, it's just some of the other conditions that aren't fulfilled. So when you're talking just the site plans, they're probably in better shape than some of the other conditions not specifically related to the plans themselves. I mean, reading further into that uh, condition number three, where I just read the part where uh, the board engineer shall approve, uh, the final site plans shall include, but not limited to, complete construction plans, final stormwater management plans, sewer plans and erosion control plans, a landscaping plan and lighting plan, all other plans described below, and plans that are customarily submitted for projects of this scope, as may be determined in the discretion of the board's engineer. So, so I would say uh, of everything that you just listed, um, you know, uh, as far as the stormwater goes, as far as um, uh, most of the uh, sanitary water. The only thing I would have to double check again is the lighting. I don't remember looking at specifically the lighting, but everything else I've, I've reviewed. Uh, and a lot of that review was done originally because the plans were pretty well um, along in the design process, a little bit more than typically you have for uh, 40Bs. Uh, you know, I'm speaking for myself, and I'd love to hear what my board members happen to think of this. I, you know, I I don't have a problem with receiving a recommendation, either thumbs up, thumbs down, or whatever your recommendation is, and the board taking on that responsibility. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I wish I'd, like I said, I wish I'd read the, <laughs> the fine print of our comprehensive permit be, uh, a little closer before uh, I got to this because I would have addressed it sooner. But uh, board members, uh, uh, do you have any thoughts uh, regarding this situation? I mean, Stuart or Steve or Jim, anybody there that uh, wants to chime in? I think, I personally think the letter Sandy's proposing that indicates that the plans are complete and acceptable would, would be enough that the board could accept that and the board could act. Anybody else? I agree with that, but I think I'm muted. No. Can anybody hear me? No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I, hear you. I was muted for a while. Yeah. That seems I'm fine with that too. Jim, was that yeah. you? I'm good with that. Steve. Okay. Uh, you know, sort of maybe as an outcome of this meeting, uh, maybe you could uh, send the board a, a letter of that nature uh, that we could, uh, you know, you know, you could say orally. You're saying that the 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 plans as submitted are, you know, substantially in conform conformance with. Uh, that's almost exactly the language I would use, <laughs> to be quite honest. I've been doing this too long. <laughs> yes, that's that's almost exactly what I would use. But yes, I don't have a, a problem with that. And then the you know the you know you know that's that's part one of uh, one of the issues we're dealing with. Uh, you know, then I think you know under those conditions, would uh, does the board want to discuss and you know, vote that, you know, with, with a couple exceptions, uh, the, the, uh, the, the plans are, uh, uh, in a, uh, in conformance and that we can, you know, 
issued the approval that condition three is looking for? Okay, I have, let's see, I have my five main members available. Um, and maybe before we do that, uh, there are a couple outstanding issues, Laura, that you had you had spoken to specifically yeah. the construction mitigation and, plan. And I think I think they're important conditions. It's just it's a little bit of a chicken and egg in terms of getting these approved before we can get a building permit and wanting to queue that up and then searching for a site contractor and the site contractor then searching for where they're going to get their fill. So some of these items are more construction phase than design phase. Um, but given the language in number three, I wonder if we can provide that documentation to Sandy when it comes in, that she can be the repository for those plans. It sounded like the building inspector also wanted to um, be in on the construction mitigation plan. Um, but certainly the, the fill requirement uh, is going to be ongoing because as the fill comes, it's going to have to be documented that it's clean fill from a particular location. So it's not necessarily, I don't see it as a once and done. We can say, yeah, we think we're going to get it from here, but then we're going to have to continue to monitor it during the course of construction. And, and, and there are other things like the, uh, the fire truck turning and all that other stuff that, that comes, that appears later in the comprehensive permit conditions that, you know, it's also needed before, uh, you know, building permits are issued and such. Um, I'm pretty sure we've submitted that stuff. I just don't want to leave this meeting to go hunt for it. <laughs> right. And, and I know our, our, our fire chief is very diligent and, you know, he probably was dealing with other issues and, or, you know, maybe somewhere there's already the letter that <laughs> exists and you will find it's dated 2019. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I think, uh, but that, that, that's not even part of condition three. That's, that's down the road. That's condition 11. That's another animal altogether. Um, but, but things like that fire, um, you know, the, uh, turning radius and all that are very important. We just ran into it in Hadley where it never got submitted and basically held the library up for months over here before they could, you know, redesign it all, but it never was submitted. And, you know, Chief is so busy between COVID and his regular schedule that he, you know, never wasn't up to him to chase it. But um, those things really, really need to be, you know, so make sure ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> I just found it. Um, it's dated January 17, 2019. Um, is the fire truck turning um, plan. It's LFT-1. Um, I'm seeing a bunch of stuff in my file that was communication around fire access, which was that study that we provided was showing that you could get a ladder up to the second floor. Um, and I think, and I have a fire department memo as well. So let me just pull it up. Uh, actually, it's a memo from Berkshire Design Group to Chief Benjamin responding to his comments, asking for him to provide a response directly to the zoning board. Uh, and then I see the letter attached as a letter, which is intended to satisfy the zoning board's request. So I, I really think we kind of covered this and maybe just need to go back and remind ourselves about it. I'll just read for you what, this is what condition uh, 11 of the comprehensive permit says. Uh, let's see, no building permit ship may be issued unless and until the applicant provides evidence to the building commissioner that is satisfy any and all concerns of the Sunderland Fire Department, including but not limited to any and all requirements contained within a certain letter from the fire department received by the board of February 2, 2019. Yep. So, uh, 
the final site plan shall include any and all details as it may be requested by the fire department. So that, that's condition 11 of the comprehensive permit uh, as written. Yep, and, I, and I, I think we went through that process. So um, I'm happy to submit those um, documents. And, and I may just, you know, Tom, we, we may just want to run it by the building, uh, the fire chief just to make sure, you know, it is what we think it is. And hey, he may say, we're all set, you know. Yep, definitely, great idea. <clears throat> So, okay. Um, so, you know, I'm trying to think how we would word this approval, you know, with the exception of the construction mitigation plans and the fill issue. Uh, And so, are there any other other open issues that we're awaiting information from uh, the RDI team that are that fall into the approval under Condition Three? <laughs> nice kitty. Uh, Any 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 discussion on <clears throat> you know uh, you know assuming we get at the uh, recommendation as discussed by Sandy uh, any discussion on for my board members about uh, issuing this approval that what we're calling final site plans which may not be right, really final site plans but as as defined under. Uh, condition three uh, are in conformance with the uh, comprehensive permit decision. Any discussion board members? Okay. Uh, well, let's see. I will start with Jim. Uh, do you uh, uh, vote to approve the plans with the uh, exceptions as stated? Yes, I do. Okay. One, one yes. Uh, Barry. Hey, we see you, Barry. Can you hear me? <laughs> we can hear you, too. Uh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Stuart. Yes, I do. Uh, I don't know if I do, but okay, I'll, I'll accept that. Uh, Mr. Williams. Yes. Okay, I vote yes. So, uh, uh, as a result of today's action during this meeting, uh, the board has approved the uh, quote final site plans as defined under condition three to be uh, in compliance with the comprehensive permit uh, decision with the exception of uh, the uh, construction mitigation plans and the issues with the fill which we understand will be uh, sorted out, and uh, you know, as the as RDI uh, works with their selected contractor, and that uh, those open issues will be submitted to the building inspector and the board and Sandy uh, at a two BD later date. Okay, so Laura, have we addressed the issue that you emailed me about uh, adequately? I believe so. Okay. Um, I'm gonna sort of jump off, this, uh, well, get into some, some business. Uh, Laura, I, uh, Laura, I had asked for like a $700, a $700 check to be, was that deposited with the town? So I'm going to turn it over to Gina to answer that. Okay. Or Jeff, if he's still here. It was deposited with the town about three weeks ago. Okay. So uh, I'll have to check. Yeah, I, I didn't get any acknowledgement from the town, but uh, I'm sure that's probably the case. So uh, you know, once I do that, uh, Sandy, if uh, I can 
uh, ask you to invoice me for your services. Uh, uh, you know, you know, done in this exercise that we just went through, or to your your letters and such. Um, uh, hey, Steve. Yes. On the issue of money, not to shoot ourselves in the foot. When I went back to read the the permit, like you, I was like, oh, it says this, it says that. Yeah. Um, one of the things it says is how actively involved Sandy will be <laughs> for the duration well, of the project. I was, gonna, I was gonna go there. Uh, <laughs> Sandy, you uh, being the board's engineer, <laughs> crop up all over this thing and have in, in terms of even further uh, involvement oh. as this thing evolves and gets constructed. And stuff. So my my suggestion is that we should give Sandy a copy of this if she doesn't have it already and have oh, her maybe price out this work. Well, es it, essentially he, coming Sandy up to the, you know, to a pre-construction meeting or by Zoom as is happening these days and also having periodic meetings with you, which Maybe those are quarterly, uh, it, you know, some parts are more relevant probably for an engineer to look at than others. So we could work out some kind of schedule. Um, but right. usually the process, the, the town is not gonna absorb this cost directly. And so it would be helpful, I think at this stage to, to try to get a, a not to exceed or a budgeted or a scope or a range of prices so that we would, RGI would put this money uh, in holding and keeping um, with the town for this work. So, so I think uh, kind of my questions around that would be expectations. Um, you know, uh, I would not anticipate us being any kind of resident engineer or someone that's there on a weekly basis. No, nope. um, I don't think that's what's asked I have, for. I have no problem to come up with kind of a schedule of, uh, you know, kind of key inspections. Um, okay. I mean, yeah. you know, similar to like a, you know, a construction it would even be less than what the what the what your design engineer. I mean, some of the things I would suggest is that when they do site visits, that they copy me on their uh, field reports, those type of things, or yes. or require them yeah. to, to do those field reports. Um, I can come up with uh, something. Um, don't take this the wrong way. I really don't have a whole lot of time to be <laughs> running out to a construction site. You don't uh, want to babysit us through this whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I will most likely delegate the site visits to uh, uh, not a senior engineer as I am, because um, uh, I don't think you'd like the cost for me to do it. Um, but yeah, but I think, you know, it, it's it's sometimes we all get involved um, with the construction side of it on a review. Um, a lot of times we don't. It depends upon uh, the town and, and the situation and stuff. So. So Steve, I could pull together uh, an overview of, of something to do, check in at critical times, as opposed to you know expectation of being there all the time. Um, you know, it's it's well, we can help you out with that, but I don't think we. I just want to make sure everyone's expectation is in line. That's all. Well, that that that's uh, you know that's fair and spot on because obviously you've been through stuff like this before, and it's easy to get burned or you know get hung out to dry someplace, and that's not what our intention is. So I, I would suggest that you, uh, if I, I'm pretty sure you have a copy of the comprehensive permit. I do. Uh, and if you put your word search on boards engineer and see everywhere it pops up, <laughs> and and uh, you can give me a, you know, we can pick and choose or, or you know, or, 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 or give me a, a approach for that. Uh, and uh, Tom, uh, there's a there's a there's a section in here, and I don't know if if you. Uh, if you if you if you choose or, or what, and and Laura, you may want to block your ears. But uh, uh, on, on condition number twenty two says, uh, you know, the board's engineers fees for any services uh, contemplated here here under shall be paid by the applicant in the manner described as blah 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 blah. blah. Uh, applicant should also pay for any third party inspections of the project's infrastructure as may be reasonably required by the town or the board's engineer. So, uh, you know, I know you, uh, we hired, 
I, I don't know what the proper word is, but it was a engineer on site for Sugarbush. Uh, and uh, we grudgingly made those bastards pay for it. So, excuse me for swearing in a, on a Zoom meeting, but uh, but uh, I don't know your thoughts. I'm not, I don't ask you to even state your thoughts now. Uh, I don't know if this project is such that you you, you would need uh, uh, you know a, a, you know any sort of a third person or third party uh, right. assistance of, above and beyond what what uh, Sandra's right. going to offer. So. So, uh, I, so just I, knowing and actually having toured a little bit of the that that private sewage disposal system that was constructed at Sugarbush Meadows, I feel like we're in a pretty different situation. Just tying in our project to public infrastructure that exists, rather than building a sewage treatment system, which right. is essentially what they did up there for well, 150 larger units. So <laughs> I don't see it as being comparable. Yeah. But but Tom, I thought uh, weren't they going to connect to our sewer system, or did that that fall apart? That it was did it. Not. Right. Uh, it probably came too much because I know they were thinking of, and the the the, uh, the sewer commissioner said that we had the capacity for it, but uh, maybe the little problem of running the sewer line like mile and a half was was too pricey for them. I believe that was the problem, but but oh. as far as the um, inspections and that and the third party, I was going to talk to Jeff about that tomorrow if if he's available, okay. and you know. You know, discuss it with the board um, because of the amount of hours that, you know, I'm salary, but I'm, you know, working that about it. So I'll uh, talk with you, Jeff, tomorrow about that if you have a chance. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know, uh, I, you know, I will say I, uh, the, the cooperation and the, the, the spirit of uh, cooperation that's been shown by RDI's team. And, you know, I, I kind of regret having to read that section, <laughs> but you know it's written into the comprehensive permit, uh, and you know I certainly don't want to stick it to to, to, to RDI uh, or the, any other team uh, in any fashion. But you know, uh, you know, uh, all parties have worked very hard to make this thing happen, and uh, you know we're we're getting close to actually seeing some tangible stuff done and you yeah. know towards reaching the conclusion of what i think will be a, a, a wonderful uh project for the town of sunland so yeah. uh, uh you know, i just you know i you know, just gotta you know like i said it, it was re reading through the whole thing was sort of like oh wow i remember this <laughs> yeah, i know <laughs> and i go oh dang i remember this <laughs> Dang, we gotta do this. We got more. We got more way to go. So, yeah. Well, that's partly why I brought the question about Sandy's time because, um, yeah, to me, that's the most meaningful kind of direct oversight that the ZBA has delegated, and we need to. We'd rather see it coming. If there's going to be a cost coming, we'd rather be able to budget it now rather than you know be surprised later. Right. So. Uh, you know, that being said, uh, I don't have any other meeting agenda items to attend to. I think we've, we've sort of touched on everything. Uh, I will await uh, the recommendation from uh, Sandy and uh, I will generate a letter uh, of approval with our, you know, our two exceptions. Uh, so that, you know, we, we substantially uh, met the obligation of condition number three of the comprehensive permit. And we got, we got some homework to do. Tom and I got to go check with the, build, or the fire chief and whatever, but uh, I think this is a good exercise. It was good seeing everybody and believe it or not, uh, I was stopping into, I stopped to see the town clerk We've re the zoning board has has received zero applications for special permits or variances in 2020. My wow. uh, annual town report is going to be very. 
empty. No reports or no applications received. So it's just a substantial part of it is this meeting. So yeah, this is the only thing we've done. I think that's called retirement. <laughs> I, I don't think so. I think the shoe's going to drop somewhere along the line. But, uh, uh, so. Yeah, well, we appreciate you com accommodating us on this Zoom format. I'm getting stale at it because I do it all the time, but it, it is an awkward format to work a group through a set of plans. So we no, thank that, you for your patience. You know, and I, I, I prefer face to face. I long for the day that we can all get together in a conference room and, and you know, see everybody. I mean, it's a little travel for, for people like Sandy, but uh, nothing like the face to face thing. And, and, and I want to also want to thank Jeff for, uh, you know, devoting his time to sit back and be lulled to sleep. Uh, uh, you know, he, he, he put this Zoom, he, he was hosting this thing and he, he assured me it would work and dang it, it did. Uh, so uh, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank my board members. I want to thank the RDI team. Uh, I don't know, I've been doing a lot of talking. I don't know if my board members have anything to add to that. No, I see negative. So, well, uh, hey, I told you, I told you, Jeff, we'd keep it under two hours. We succeeded. So, uh, good seeing you all. Uh, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year to all, and uh, keep on pushing. This is this is going to be good when it's done. Uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. Yep. Andy, thanks for all your effort. Send me You're that welcome. invoice, and I'll even pay you maybe. That, that would be nice. You won't see me again if you don't. <laughs> don't do that. Don't, don't, don't. All right. Thank you all so much. Yep. Thank for you. Your time. Thank you all. Yep. Thanks, Thank you. Steve, do you need a Do you need a motion to adjourn? Wow, Jeff. I mean, I, you, you're awful. Jeez. I move you. I I I, I, do, I do a motion Second. for my board. Seconded. I second it, Steve. Okay, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. I, I think by a unanimous motion, we have adjourned this meeting. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks. Good night, guys.